All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So I'm excited to bring on a new guest co-host for you. And I'm always excited for all of our new guest co-hosts. But uh, this very professional and healthy woman, uh, I've been trying to get on for a while. And I unfortunately had to reschedule her uh, for the regular listeners due to a fun lung collapse adventure of mine a few weeks back. But hey, we're all in the men and we're doing well. So without further ado, let me get into it. She is a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Iowa. She's the author of The Walls Protocol, How I Beat Progressive MS Using Paleo Principles and Functional Medicine. She's also the author of the cookbook, which I own, The Walls Protocol, Cooking for Life, the revolutionary modern paleo plan to treat all chronic autoimmune conditions. So obviously, if you haven't figured it out by now, welcome to the show, Dr. Terry Walls. Hey, thank you for having me. I am so glad we're catching up. So, and you're dialing in from Iowa. I'm dialing in on the East Coast from Pennsylvania. And our listeners never hear it because it's great microphone, but you might hear our Calvin the Coonhound in the other room from time to time. So, I don't know. Are you, are you a dog fan? Oh, very much so. If we're <laughs> lucky, uh, our cockapoo will come uh, join us from time to time. He wants to be part of these interviews and gets up in my lap and uh, lets uh, everyone know. Two and a half years ago, I used to care too much about like him barking and howling. And then I'm like, wait a minute. He's a 10-year-old English red tick coon hound, and that's just what they do. So they like to howl. <laughs> yes. They have a lot uh, to say. So uh, real quick, cockapoo. Is that the bigger one or the smaller one? Uh, it's a cocker spaniel poodle mix. So he's right. about 20 to 25 pounds. So smaller. Okay. Because he's, well, before we had to take his leg off around Thanksgiving to save him from cancer, he was right around 90, 95. Now we're keeping oh. him around 85. But That's he, a big dog. He bounced back strong. So we now call him, um, well, there's a very popular hashtag, in case you ever wanted to know, in the Instagram world, Tripod, T-R-I-P-A-W-D. And oh. uh, we're trying to get him more exposure in there. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we're obviously dog lovers. So, well, I'm excited to bring you on. You are very active in the podcast space, the interview space, the all over the place, because... Your story is so powerful. Uh, I lost a cousin to ALS, uh, obviously not MS, oh, yeah. but I spent years uh, doing MS-150 bike rides to raise money for MS uh, because mm -hmm. ALS just didn't have the exposure years ago. Yeah. So, and I'm a huge cyclist, so I just I found these MS rides uh, called the MS-150s that happen all over the country. And I, I did the one from Philadelphia uh, to Ocean City, New Jersey and back. And we always oh. did all as much mileage as we could and raise as much money as we could. And my, my group of guys, there was probably about 10 of us. We'd raise thousands of dollars every year just because that's just, I don't know, it gave us an excuse to go ride a bike and yeah. it was yeah. benefiting uh, people like yourself. So, but now let, let's be real. The money we raised, did it benefit? I mean, where does that all go in the MS world since you're heavily integrated into that? I've always wanted to understand that. Is it all research? Is it all? Well, it, it'll, it'll depend on the organization. So, um, okay. you know, the first organization that funded me is a group out of Canada. And 90% of all the funds they raised uh, went into funding this early pilot research, like the stuff that I did. Okay. The, now, MS, the yeah. MS Society, um, uh, in addition to doing... Uh, research. They also fund programming events and uh, direct consumer education. So it's not quite uh, as even, as clearly split. Hmm. <clears throat> so I, I can't really speak to what is their percentage. Uh, but the MS Society certainly is, is very important uh, because they do um, a lot of pilot studies mm -hmm. uh, where they just give an early researcher $50,000. Uh, and that's generally for uh, an animal model study. Okay. Uh, this year, we put in a uh, pilot pr uh, proposal to start teaching uh, basically the Walls diet uh, via Zoom classes. Uh, and so we could see what impact that would have in a Zoom classroom. Hmm. Uh, and the MS Society is funding my much larger, larger study where we're comparing the Swank diet and the Walls diet. You know, and that's a four-year study. We've got uh, another year and a half to go. Wow. Uh, but you know, I'm very, that, that's really uh, a huge, huge deal that uh, they decided to make dietary research uh, a, an important uh, research priority. Well, I think part of your own personal backstory, I think helped, I would hope helped <laughs> position uh, oh, yeah. the goals of this. So, you no, know, and what happened um, 
you know, I'll tell my story very, very quickly. So I, I have multiple sclerosis uh, diagnosed in 2000. Um, being the academic doc, I sought out the best people, uh, got the best treatments, and ended up uh, converting into uh, the progressive phase of the illness. Uh, by 2007, uh, I couldn't really sit up anymore. I was struggling uh, to walk using two walking sticks. I had severe fatigue. Um, I was beginning to have brain fog. And I had severe, severe uh, episodes of trigeminal neuralgia, terrible pain. Hmm. I, and, and that's when I had started, uh, after four years in my short recline wheelchair, uh, doing my own research on the basic science, what I could do. Uh, starting with supplements to support my mitochondria, which helped my fatigue, reduced my fatigue a little bit. I had, uh, adapted the paleo diet. Um, it, it really didn't seem to make much change, but I stayed with it because at least I, I, it, it, there was a scientific rationale. Hmm. Uh, and then I discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine, took their course on neuroprotection, had a deeper understanding of what I could do, more supplements. And then I had this really big aha moment. I should redesign my diet based on the supplements, um, based on the ancestral health principles, on functional medicine. So it's still a paleo diet, but much less meat, more vegetables. Um, and it was dramatic, the speed of which my uh, pain resolved, my, my mental clarity resolved, my fatigue resolved. I began walking again, um, and I would ultimately go back to biking. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to do an 18.5-mile uh, bike ride um, 12 months after, you know, getting up out of that wheelchair. Uh, and of course, this changes how I think about medicine, how I'm practicing medicine in a traumatic brain injury clinic and in, in the primary care clinic. Um, I, I would write a case report on myself, a case series, uh, and then we would do some uh, pilot studies uh, that were uh, very exciting. Uh, and of course, we did a number of pilot studies uh, replicating what I did and others with progressive MS with remarkably positive results. Uh, and of course, uh, then I had that book uh, come out, which was a very popular bestseller. Uh, oh, yes. And the MS uh, Society, um, because they monitor uh, social media, saw that in 2014, the year my book came out, that comments about the Walls Diet, the Walls Protocol, uh, Dr. Cherry Walls, dwarfed the uh, commentary about all the other disease-modifying drug treatments. That they had already been supporting. That they had been supporting. Uh, and so they, they realized uh, that it was really important to the constituents to get more programming about diet and lifestyle and to make diet and lifestyle a research priority. Um, I love the fact you're actually using the key word here, lifestyle, too, because this is more than just diet. Obviously, oh, absolutely. a big component of your backstory, but there's, I think, so many of us from a health, we talk about we've had to fuel your health, business, and lifestyle on this show. And I love emphasizing the lifestyle component because it's not just the food. Obviously, how you fuel your body is important, but then I'm sure you can reinforce, you already hinted, right? Yes. Proper supplementation for your mitochondria. Those are the power plants of our cells and rest and recovery, cortisol levels coming down. All of these things are tied into your lifestyle. It is all connected. So um, you can't exercise your way out of a terrible diet. Mm. If you uh, clean up your diet, uh, but you don't address your sleep, that will greatly slow down your progress. If you don't address your um, stress levels, that will slow down your progress. And you, you can't get stronger if you don't add exercise and rehab into your, pro into your progress. So the, the more comprehensive you'd like your recovery to be, the more comprehensive the work will have to be for you to achieve that. So were you, because uh, I, it's, I, well, I read your book, God, at least I read it a second time again about a year and a half ago. So it's just, I've had it through a couple of times because obviously, again, not MS, ALS, but I still had a personal connection and I do see a lot of crossover between the two. Oh, uh, there's a, a lot of crossover. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the whole point here, I think big picture is obviously finding ways to remove inf the inflammatory responses, right? The inflammation in our bodies. And that's a big part of your story. Right. You want to re remove the inflammation. You want to uh, uh, stop the destruction. And you want to be sure that, uh, the brain cells have the building blocks that they need to do the repair work. For If you look at the molecular level and the cellular level, uh, across many of the diseases affecting our brain, there's oxidative stress, so the mitochondria aren't working very well. There's inappropriate inflammation, very common. There's an excessive level of toxins, which might be solvents, 
or pesticides or heavy metals. Uh, and then there's uh, hormonal imbalance. And, and so that's true if you have depression or psychosis or schizophrenia or multiple sclerosis or a co early cognitive decline, uh, dementias, uh, memory loss uh, associated with diabetes, uh, uh, memory loss associated with uh, mercury poisoning or oh, wow. uh, chronic uh, fungal poisoning. So uh, teaching people how to address all those root causes to optimize their nutrition, optimize their stress reduction, uh, often it leads to symptom reduction. I, I can agree with you on the, it's interesting because I, I just finished another podcast earlier focusing on, uh, for example, healthy gut bacteria, right? Your microbiome, mm -hmm. how things are so intertwined. As Here you we go, think. my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for the video watchers, they see what she's doing. She's holding up, I mean, how, what do they call that? But the, this is the, my, my poop hat. To be Your poop hat, okay. Really, so <laughs> I, I, I would wear it. But, I, uh, but you have more it, behind you. I, I, I'm surrounded by healthy poops. It's very important. <laughs> so, so obviously what we're having fun with here is the fact that nowadays you can actually submit your poop <laughs> to have research done on it to see where you're at with your healthy gut bacteria and your biome and everything else. Is, and that's obviously a big part of what you, your, your team is doing too. Yes, yes. You know, actually, we've added uh, a microbiologist to our team. So in my current okay. research protocol, um, we're collecting blood that we're freezing for analyses, and we're collecting poop. So we'll be able to analyze how the microbiome changes as you adopt, you know, steady diet one or steady diet two. Okay. And then we can see how these changes are associated with clinical outcomes. So, so very do, exciting. Do you find... Because uh, I'm intrigued, because this, this came up in the last show. We're talking about, okay, well, you know, how often do you retest? And I mean, a lot, because again, to your point, right, as you make these hopefully healthier changes in your lifestyle, things are going to morph, things are going to change, things are going to adapt. You know, the, the human body is an amazing machine. Yes. Start giving it the things that it needs, things hopefully should be improving. So, how often are you, I mean, how often so, are, is it average? So, in my research protocol, we'll try and collect poop every time we see folks. So uh, at each uh, uh, point, and there are four points where we do clinical outcomes, okay. um, we check poop. In so how often are people practice, coming back to you? Uh, every 12 weeks. Oh, okay. So like every, okay, every few months. Th now that's my clinical trials. In my practice, I tell people every time you poop, turn around and look. Is it soft, easily passed bowel movement? Is it hard? Uh, it, so we talk about poop rocks poop logs, poop snakes, poop pudding. You guys talk about poop. <laughs> so we, we talk about poop all the time. Pudding and tea, there's too much inflammation. And either you have an acute infection or there is, we need to evaluate you for a, a, a chronic infection. Which one is that one? If, if it's uh, poop, poop pudding. Oh, pudding. Oh, like off, obviously more. Too loose. If it's too loose, it's a problem. If you just had a, an acute diarrhea, that's okay, as long as it goes back to something firmer. Mm -hmm. um, a snake is perfect. But many people with neurologic issues uh, begin to have difficulty controlling our sphincters. And so if we have snakes, the snakes may start escaping into the pants. And of course, yes. that's a problem. Yes. Um, so I, what I want people to do is have an easily set uh, past bowel movement that they can control every day. If it, it, it is hard, you feel a little constipated, or you're, you're pooping rocks, you need more fiber. Uh, and there are a, a number of commercial products that are saying, you know, here are the species and the mix of what you've got. Um, but you know, when I talk with my microbiology colleagues, we rely on our microbes to make metabolites as they metabolize the food. And these smaller molecules, the metabolites get into our bloodstream and they fill in the biochemical gaps that we can't do anymore because of uh, our random mutations that have occurred over thousands of generations. Okay. And so our health depends on having uh, this very diverse microbiome that can fill in those microbial metabolite gaps to run our chemistry. Mm -hmm. And the microbes swap genes all the time, back and forth all the time. So. I may know that I have uh, microbe ABC, but that microbe may have already swapped out its genes 
what really determines my health is can these microbes make all these necessary metabolites? Okay. So you want to have a, a diverse uh, microbiome. The best test is a test that can look at your species plus the genes, plus all the metabolites, plus your DNA to tell you, can you run all the chemistry that needs to happen? It's a lot of detail. And that's a lot of detail. Uh, commercially, uh, those products aren't yet uh, readily available. Mm -hmm. There are these products. Um, there are some products that can give you the census. There are some products that will give you your DNA. No one has yet combined the census, the metabolites, plus your DNA. I was going to say, I, I've, uh, are you familiar with Dr. Anthony J? No. So he's a geneticist. He's been on Vinny's show. He's been on my show. He's doing work with uh, the Mayo Clinic right now. Uh, but he, he wrote a great book called, called Estrogeneration. Obviously, he's a big geek about the hormones and, and estrogen yeah, and everything else. Yeah. And uh, he's a big advocate for getting people off of plastics and everything else. But one of, oh his, one of yeah. his side products is that he will take people's raw, raw data from something as simple as a 23andMe uh, test, which I went ahead and did. And we did a live podcast where he actually, I'd already provided him my 23andMe data. Well, the, the raw file, because he's like, I don't want what they say. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll dig into it deeper. And he comes up with a supplemental analysis and chemicals analysis based on your DNA. And he can actually tell you, based on your DNA, what chemicals obviously are more impactful yes, against yes. you negatively, but also yes. what supplementation may benefit you more, right? So, so, but he made a good point. He said, you know, Scott, for, for our, that podcast last year we did, he said, you know, I wish I also would have had your blood work and a few other components because I like to get a bigger picture. Uh, and even he said, like, 23andMe is great, but that's just not it's enough. Just at the beginning. Yeah. It, you know, um, so back when I was in medical school, a few years, a few years ago, we uh, had predicted that humans would have about 100,000 genes uh, to, to make all the proteins that we need to make in order to run the chemistry of life. But we, we don't. We only have about 25,000. Okay. So the other 75,000 steps are from our m microbes that yeah. our ancestral mothers had a random mutation, couldn't make that uh, step, but their microbes could. Hmm. So there was reproductive success. And at that moment, that gene got moved from my human DNA to the microbes, which is why, and so our microbes help make all these metabolites to fill in these gaps. Um, it, and so, in our gut, we have about 5 million to 9 million different genes. I was going to bring that up. I was going to ask you. Like, what, yeah. what, what, I knew there was millions. I just didn't know how so, many. So it's 9 million, in, in, and that's in healthy you know, uh, Americans. Okay. In a hunter-gatherer, they have about three times what really? the rest of us have. Now, hold on, let's so, define that because nowadays there's all this – Google SEO and keywords and there's, you know, cause I, I, it, I live it's, a paleo it's very, lifestyle carnivore. It, it, it's really hard to know in a free living wild human, hmm. what, what the mic, the uh, gut microbiome would have looked like. So what would be, when you refer to a hunter gatherer, are you obviously referring back to the paleolithic era version or a modern? Well, um, what, what I'm trying to say is we don't really know, it's very hard, and I, when you read the research, mm -hmm. it's hard to find studies that have found humans that are living in the wild that have not been contaminated by antibiotic exposure ever. Oh. Okay. Uh, it, and, you, and you also have to think, you know, here in the U.S., there's so much Roundup. It's in our um, rainwater. It's everywhere. Uh, and, and so to find a gut microbiome that hasn't been contaminated either by antibiotic exposure or uh, environmental contaminants is getting harder and harder. Hmm. So, so we, we don't know. We, we do not know uh, that full consequence. That's true, because if you think about it, all the cultures around the world, I mean, how many truly old school style indigenous cultures are you, can you really come across right. that haven't can you, been can you painted? Find that yeah. have not been contaminated or their environment has Maybe. not been contaminated. Off the first guess, uh, an average lay person, me thinking right now, like, oh, I, until I moved west, I didn't know this, but I was like, oh, maybe, maybe the Native American tribal, you know, because there's a lot of tribes that still keep their, you know, on their lands in Western US. But 
I, I left the corporate world years ago and spent a couple of years out west as a hotshot with the U.S. Forest Service, serving as a wildland firefighter. So I had many, uh, uh, you know, many different tribes on my crew. So I got to learn all about their cultures. And he actually says they're very, pardon the term, Americanized or you know, modern yes. influence because. Yes their healthy lifestyles have gone to the wayside. Like where they came from was so much better for them. But now they're like, they're eating the preserved foods and the, and the canned foods and they're, they, 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 I, I actually hiked the, the Havasupai tribal lands back in 2007. And they, they have the mule trains bringing, it looks like mail, mail shipping containers on the backs of, of the mules, but they're bringing in, and they also bring in long line cargo nets from helicopters of, you know, outside influenced food and stuff into these villages. And there's trash everywhere. And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. I couldn't believe it wasn't as clean and pure as I hoped it was. So, No. Um, it's a, a big cultural yeah. travesty. So with, with all the research you guys are now, you said about a year and a half left? In a year and a half left. So um, uh, in 2020, we'll be analyzing our data, mm -hmm. uh, comparing the impact of adapting the WALS diet, which is like, a highly structured Paleolithic diet that looks sort of like a, um, a little less meat, many more vegetables, uh, sort of a hybrid between paleo and Mediterranean, actually. Okay. Uh, and then uh, a low saturated fat diet. We'll be measuring changes uh, in the blood, changes in the poop, uh, changes in vision function, uh, hand and motor function, quality of life. And uh, seeing- You say low, low saturated fat? Correct. The, the comparison diet was a swank diet, which also has some um, uh, published research that was positive for it as well. Because I've been, obviously, for the past, I mean, people like Vinny's podcast show, Fitness Confidential, and a lot of other outside. It's interesting because I've been hearing, or I've been studying also, something not at your level, but I mean, okay, embracing more saturated fats in certain ways. So it's very interesting. That's why I wonder. You know, um, and the reason we chose sat the low the low sat fat diet mm -hmm. is if people are going to be with a chronic disease are willing to do a dietary intervention, uh, you need to get offer them uh, an intervention that has some published research behind it. So uh -huh. no one, no one had uh, a diet that didn't at least have some favorable results. Now okay. we, we think uh, there's a, there's a 12 week observation period. Then people are randomized either to the low saturated fat diet or the walls diet. Uh, and of course, my hypothesis is that the Walls diet will have a superior uh, clinical response than the saturated fat diet. Hmm. Um, but both these diets will have a lot of improvements from the observation period. Well, I'm excited that you are incorporating in, like the Mediterranean component because a good friend of mine, um, she spent years working with diabetes and influence from a nutritional standpoint as a dietitian. And so she's written a couple of books in the past couple of years specifically on Mediterranean cookbook influence uh, for for that diabetic influence. And one of the biggest things I love about that lifestyle is I, and I learned this from, you know, Vinny again too, like I do shots of olive oil every day. Like, I mean, you can't beat a more beautiful source of healthy fats. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and a lot of the stuff around fat, we, we need fat to make the insulation on the wiring in the brain. Uh, and, and so my point of, my perspective is it's the ratio of the fats. You want to have uh, plenty of omega three, some omega six, you want some saturated fat, uh, and if you go really low sat fat, I mean, whether, wh whatever um, you're doing with fats, you want to have this ratio, omega-3, omega-6, and saturated fat. Um, and you want to certainly avoid the processed fats, the trans fats. Uh, a lot of the frying and vegetable oils uh, leads to uh, increasing trans fats in your own skillet. Yeah, a lot so, of people have been, unfortunately, as a branding and marketing professional, I have no problem criticizing our profession. Uh, there's been a lot of money spent to teach people that, oh, you can superheat a vegetable oil. And when in fact, no, not recommended whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Just because just it doesn't smoke it. doesn't mean it's, it's good for you. True. I mean, you eat, there's even, there's even some studies on the risk of superheating uh, olive oil too long. It's got a good heat right. ratio, but you still, you know, m my yeah. recommendation is, you have olive oil cold. If you want to cook with a fat, you cook with a saturated fat. Uh, like, an, fat like an animal fat. An animal fat or yeah. coconut oil. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you use the monosaturated uh, fats uh, like uh, olive oil uh, cold, and you pour that over your dressing or over your vegetables. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, that way you, you get all the great benefits of the olive oil without damaging the olive oil. Oh, the olive oil I get from friends, actually mutual friends. Again, I hate to keep bringing up a Vinny, but I, it, I get it from Italy. It comes yeah. here untainted and it's so good. Oh my God. You get this peppery aftertaste. I'm like, oh, this is what real pure olive oil, legitimate olive oil yes. is. Because uh, there's a great book. I'm not sure if you guys have actually ever recommended it for your uh your, your research group or your, your customers, so to speak, but like extra virginity. I mean, they yes, put some yes. great research into that book and I had no idea that we can't, can't trust yes. olive oil. Once, once you've tasted uh, really elegant, uh, pure, clean olive oil, uh, it, it, it is so delicious. Uh, you don't need anything else. Then, then I become uh, an olive oil snob. Yeah. And I, I only want to get these uh, high-end olive oils from companies that I'm very confident in. Yeah, it's uh, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with, it, but I use Villa, Villa Capelli, so is yes. the, is the one. And I, again, I I buy a three liter tin at a time now because I end up like getting little cool ceramic sampling bottles, and I pour it over and I give it to people because I'm like, listen, you think I'm kidding here? I, I mean, just take it. This is what you good know, stuff tastes like. <laughs> uh, one of my the research uh, postdoc scholars uh, in our lab is from Jordan, so he had gone home to Jordan and he was coming back and he brought this big tin of olive oil and he was so upset because he wanted to bring that back to give to me and he couldn't get it through immigrations. Uh, we had that problem a year and a half ago. A fiance and I, we went down to uh, South Africa to go to an equine conference. She was doing research and credit updates and everything else. We decided to turn it into a vacation. And um, what do they call it? Remnants, right? So like yes. the, uh, the indigenous species of, of their, their meat animals. And you can get them in I forget how they, what they call beef jerky over there, but it's a much better way than what we do <laughs> with me here. But I, I was like, oh, these are amazing. They sold them in the airport. I tried bringing it back. Nope, couldn't get it through uh, customs. And I was so frustrated because it was so fresh. It was so clean. And it was from very, very good sources of uh, obviously no. wild game, wild game, you know, not a factory farm. So yeah, the struggles are real for international travel. <laughs> um, well, I mean, so, and actually, real quick while I'm talking to you, I'm going to do some screen sharing, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you check her out, her name, terrywalls.com. Everything's on here. So, the reason why I'm bringing up your site, part of your research, what you guys are doing, I noticed seminar and retreat. Is oh, this yeah. to help create more awareness around what you're doing? So, um, there's two things that happen at the seminar retreat. One, uh, it's three days, I'm teaching the public about the, uh, using diet and lifestyle to improve their health and vitality. And in addition, I'm teaching health professionals how you can teach these concepts uh, uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and we train health professionals because the health professionals stay an extra day and they end up getting uh, certified and they'll take an exam that they'll have to pass on how to use the WALS protocol as part of their clinical practice. And that I'm excited having, by. Having 300 plus people this year um, and uh, last year we had people from seven uh, countries, uh, uh, Australia, Europe, uh, South America. Now, do you, is it just you kind of leading it or do you have other people that have been trained and certified oh, already come uh, back? So, um, I do a lot of, a lot of the speaking. Uh, I have some additional health professionals uh, that will come in uh, that I've I curated. Uh, so, and of course we have a begin in the morning, uh, I'm doing the teaching. In the afternoon, we, we break down into beginners and advanced classes. Mm. Um, we have a lot of skill practicing sessions um, so individuals can grow their internal motivation to do this work, uh, practice how we talk and communicate about uh, our lifestyle issues. We're going to have uh, a really interesting uh, conversation um, uh, Wednesday night, so the Welcome Wednesday, people telling their recovery stories. That's a huge hit. On Thursday, we'll be talking about sex and intimacy. Uh, in relationships, uh, which I think is going to be very, very exciting. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, the, the hormonal imbalance is alone from that. Uh, yes. From a poor lifestyle so, to a better lifestyle. <laughs> correct. Correct. Uh, so it, it, it's really uh, uh, energizing. You know, and the other thing that, that is uh, so cool, Scott, is and people come back year after year. Um, oh, so I, I'm, I'm seeing folks who, who came uh, initially uh, wheelchair dependent and are now you know, lifting weights, getting more mobile, uh, uh, using walkers. Wow. So uh, people are making progress uh, in their recoveries. 
So can you say the term, I mean, because I'm always interested about this. So I truly believe, for example, my father became type 2 diabetic ten, over 10 years ago. And I say became because I, he wasn't born that way, ladies and gentlemen. You know, he, his lifestyle choices led him down that path. And over the years, uh, when my family chooses to listen to me, um, we've gotten him back to a, a, a single pharmaceutical now. You know, he doesn't need all the other stuff you know, because he was actually, once you get healthier, he starts showing symptoms of being overly medicated. Yeah, oh, um, yeah absolutely. Which is a great problem to have, by, mind you, So if you catch it. So my, my issue is, is that it's, people are afraid to state that you can reverse disease. What is your position well, on that? So, so my position is uh, the root cause of much of the chronic disease, whether it's diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, mental health issues, obesity, is this cellular dysfunction. And so if I provide nutrition support at the cellular level, it can be hard to predict how much repair is possible. Okay. You can predict as people implement diet and lifestyle, we have to watch them closely so they don't become over-medicated as the cells improve. Right. Uh, and so we're often tapering medications, then eliminating medications, and we see function improve. Uh, and so are, are they cured from their um, depression, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune problem? No, they, they, they are far better managed at the cellular level. If they went back to the previous diet and lifestyle, all that cellular dysfunction would be back sure. and the need for medication would return. Would if you it, say it, it's an increased chance of it coming back even faster because they already had a pre-existing yes. had it before? Yeah. You know, and I, and I'll, in my revision of the book, I'll talk about that a bit more as uh, sort of a, uh, some scientific terms about epitope spreading. Um, so when you, when you, go off your diet and lifestyle, things uh, may blow up again. And you'll get some, if you clean up your diet and lifestyle, you'll improve. Uh, can you improve completely all the way back? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Hmm. It is one of the reasons uh, we, we spend a lot of time explaining why you want to stay good on your diet and lifestyle and why yeah, this is a lifetime commitment for your, for your best outcomes. That's my biggest goal for obviously my own. I mean, it's funny because even not funny, but uh, my own mother, she, she recently was showing some, she doesn't, there's not, it's nothing confirmed that she has rheumatoid arthritis or not, but obviously she's showing increased inflammatory responses. Now she's, you know, her and my father are going to enter the 70 bracket. And I keep advising them like, these are all inflammatory responses. Like we can, we can reduce these symptoms. We can make things better, but I'm not the health professional, so it's hard to help your own family. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's hard to help our uh, friends and family. This is a conversation we talk about, uh, actually a lot at the seminars, how do we grow internal motivation, how to have these conversations, how to be, be beacons of light and hope, Yes. Uh, and uh, create attraction. Um, it, you know, and, I, and I, it, yeah, that's a, a very compelling issue that many of us face. There's somebody that we love deeply, who's making decisions that, that we can see as harmful and how do we, how do we deal with that? Uh, and maintain the beacon of hope, maintain the relationship. Yeah. Uh, and, um, I mean, I, I've got my, big own, some big fans of this show. Uh, so some even local here that we, we get together from time to time and they, I think my own frustrations have passed on to them because they become health and fitness advocates through listening to shows like this one and professionals like you. And they see the light and they start making their own changes in their lifestyle. And I, what I always advise them is like one of the unfortunate side effects of taking accountability for your own health and learning to improve things for yourself and obviously others around you if you have kids and family, et cetera, and just your closest friends is that unfortunately you start knowing too much and that's an interesting problem to have, right? Because well, then you, like, you want to help everybody. <laughs> so so well, this conversation we have about, you know, so you, you have your adolescent kids. You, you figured out how to make these better choices. Now your adolescent kids don't feel like following. And, and uh, so some of the ways our families deal with that is for their children, it's like, okay, if I'm paying for this meal, then it's going to meet my standards. If you want to buy it hmm. and pay for the meal you can you can make your choices or it's my home and the only thing that's going to be in my home is food that i think is good for us 
if you if you buy something that you think is harmful for yourself and you bring it into the house i'm throwing it out right so uh, we, we reflect that what i what you can control is what you're what you're paying for and what you're going to allow into your eating space but you have to recognize your adult children when they're not in your space and they're buying it on their own they're going to make their their own decisions and um so a lot of families we that's part of the skills that we practice is how do we talk about food? What, what are the parameters that we're gonna decide that we support? Uh, and we have to let our adult children or children as they're transi transitioning into adults make their decisions, uh, have their consequences. Uh, and uh, that is a topic that people often want to talk about. And so we end up practicing that a bunch. I think it's because we, they, especially if you personally have improved your own life, you feel the changes, you feel the increased energy, you feel the inflammation leaving the body, the chronic pain you might've had before that could be possibly falling away, right? These symptoms. And then it's so powerful, you wanna share the message, but some people so, aren't ready, they're not ready. In, in one of my, our, our, our uh, highlight talks is this young woman uh, who I think is uh, 15 this year, who will be coming back again, talking about her story. 15 years of that, age? 15 years old. Oh. Her story, her uh, health journey, uh, being profoundly ill as a child, uh, her family using diet and lifestyle, uh, really regressing, having her in great health. And then she's an adolescent, and adolescents have to make their, you know, their decisions. And so she quit following her diet and lifestyle program, got incredibly sick, mm. and then came back to mom and said, I'm sick, I need help. And so she got wow. control of her life. And so she, she now uh, is helping me teach uh, the protocol and helping uh, talk about how you talk to your children about this uh, and how you talk to your kids uh, as elementary age kids. How do you talk to them as a junior high kid? How do you talk with them uh, as a uh, young adult? Well, I mean, it, it's That's even a fabulous. So it's a fabulous uh, session. And then we break down into skills and practice those conversations. So your medical professional attendees, they're there yes. to observe all this too. Oh yeah. So oh, they're they're so I would say the seminar is about two thirds patients and families, a third health professionals. Okay. Everyone's mixed in. The health professionals stay an extra day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we do case based learning. I, I'm loving this because I had this frustration, as you know, we had to reschedule the show because I had an unfortunate rare accident and collapsed the lung of all things. And uh, apparently tall, lean, uh, 20 year old athletes have this problem as endurance training athletes, but I'm 41 and I, I, I'd scored something that a 20 year old should get. So I'm going to take that as, Hey, I'm pretty healthy fit. I just happen to get a rare injury. But my frustration with the medical profession is not on the personnel per se, right? It's the system driving it because my very first meal, I make a joke about it all the time now is that they, 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 I get sent to the ER, they put the chest tube in, they get the air out of my chest, and the next morning, the very first meal they serve me is French toast with a side bowl of bran cereal. And I, I literally, I picked the, the lid off the thing and I look at it and I put it right back down. I'm like, no, thank you. I'll fast until the next meal time. <laughs> and then after that, because I ended up being in for eight days, this my my rare bleb, as they call it, this blister that appeared on the lung that that you know sprung the leak, so to speak. They, we ended up having to do surgery, and it's now one month later. I'm I still have some soreness, but trust me, I don't have. I truly believe I don't have the pain or discomfort that I, other patients who have gone through this probably do if they don't have my lifestyle, right? Oh, absolutely. And the frustration is that I found out. That luckily, this hospital, they're cool. It's St. Luke's University Health Network. Um, I was able to request what I wanted. I wanted eggs and bacon. You know, I don't want your bread. I don't want your jello. And I'm, I'm not here for a dessert train. Uh, my fiance, I had her bringing in my own grass fed sourced uh, meats that I have, you know, from a, I have a cow raised every year. I buy a quarter. We all, it's the way I grew up. I grew up on a farm. So I'm oh, just, good man. I told my dad, I said, Dad, I'm just doing what you did for me when I was a kid. So you just need to start doing what you taught me and you're going to do a lot better because I'm doing everything that we did when we were kids, when you yeah. used to get source all the meat from where you came from, put it in the freezer. Like that's, that's, I'm just doing what you taught me. So, um, but the frustration there is that luckily this hospital lets you bring in outside food. I found out that some hospitals don't let you do this. It's yeah. a, it's a no, no. 
And I know more than their dietitians and their nutritionists. And I have no problem telling people that, but you have it's, to a, be, it's a touchy subject you have to keep for yourself. Yeah. You know, it, 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 and the internet is a wonderful tool. It helps us learn more rapidly, uh, both the good and the wonderful things. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately some, uh, very, uh, terrible, hateful things as well. Oh, yes. uh, it, allow, it allows change to happen much, much more rapidly. Uh, and it, it amplifies human nature, uh, the wonderful parts of human nature and the less wonderful parts as well. Would you say that's uh, impacted you in a, in a positive and a negative way too with oh, everything you know, that uh, you've, you've created uh, over the years? Uh, so certainly. Um, so I, I was able to discover my healing journey because I was able to access this through the PubMed and my internet searches. Uh, it also meant that, I, that uh, there's probably a robust uh, pushback uh, uh, as well with some people who are very critical of the ancestral health movement mm-hmm. of uh, functional medicine. Uh, and so there's, you know, Quack Watch. I'm sure I'm uh, up there as well. Um, Is there literally a site called Quack Watch? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I'm, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> so, um, and when I first started having these conversations, uh, uh, the you know, MS Society banned me as a speaker because I was creating false hope. Mm. Uh, and that was in 2009. And now, 10 years later, the MS Society has given me over a million dollars to, to do research. At the university, I've gone from being this sort of eccentric oddity to being this brilliant visionary. It only took 10 years. Other, and so that's a very short time period. You know, I, I have a, a, um, a an appointment at, at the internal medicine where my primary appointment. Uh, I also have an appointment in the College of Public Health in nutrition epidemiology. I have an appointment in the Department of Neurology. So, uh, and I do, you know, guest lectures. Well, uh, nowadays. In therapy as well. Now, yeah. so. It, t- it took 10 plus years to get, I guess, them and caught up to you. that's a very rapid it's a very rapid time frame. You know, I just met with the okay. chair of neurology who was wanting to hear more about my research and to schedule, um, you know, a, a grand rounds in the department of neurology. Hmm. Uh, cause I've been giving lectures to the residents um, in neurology and, and internal medicine uh, in the college of public health. I, uh, and I mean, it, it, people feel like it's, it's going very slowly. I'm looking at this thinking the speed of change is very rapid. Uh, you know, and my research is being quoted now uh, in these meta-analyses of the therapeutic lifestyle interventions for MS. And now there are other, other scientists studying uh, dietary interventions. So there are clinical, trial, clinical dietary intervention trials uh, going on for MS. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on the show, not just because of the ALS connection and obviously my old fundraising I did years ago for MS, but it's... I have close friends. My fian- one of my fiance's good friends. She's a doctor at PT. Her, uh, she ended up moving back here, buying the, her mother's house because her mother lives with MS. And she does have a, I mean, she, she's pretty far along. I mean, they have a, a, a nurse come every single day. I mean, she's under monitoring and everything. It's, you know, they got the modified uh, minivan, and, uh, yes. but she, she doesn't leave the house as much as she used to. And so this is uh, one of many struggles as far as diseases so- out there. We've certainly seen people have major impact on quality of life, on pain, on fatigue, on thinking ability, on mood. And we've seen big changes on motor function. Now, for the big changes on motor function, it's going to require a big commitment in terms of physical therapy and exercise and work. But uh, absolutely, it's certainly possible um, because, you know, life is really a series of uh, self-correcting biochemistry. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to do the work, your cells often have far more regenerative uh, capacity than we realize. Oh, we, we, we even got her to, to come visit. I'm a CFL one CrossFit trainer too. And, and uh, her, my fiance does a lot of CrossFit. We, we love it. And we actually, her mom, she brought her mom uh, to the CrossFit gym and we obviously, you know, people think, Oh, CrossFit's this crazy thing. I'm like, no, we were just having her going through range of motion exercises and moving a PVC pipe, like nothing crazy, nothing heavy. It's about moving the body, you know, movement is life. Engage. Movement is life. Our, yeah. our cells, our muscle cells expect to move, expect to do work. And if they aren't doing that work, it, it, it really uh, alters our metabolism and our biochemistry in a very negative way. So well, helping it, people get that movement going again is very healing. The interesting thing is your connection on the neurology too, because 
this isn't just MS related. Granted, I'm so impressed that they've stepped up to help fund a lot of what you're doing. But I mean, this also applies to healthy aging. I mean, there's so many people who don't have MS, but are still, I don't know, pardon the term, wasting away because due to lack of movement and all of the things that your protocol is helping with. Our our, our bodies should work well into our 80s, 90s, and 100. We should still be alert, physically active, uh, very capable. Uh, And because of our terrible lifestyle, we have this rapid decline after about age 30, which is stunning. Um, if we get people, uh, and I would, in my therapeutic lifestyle clinic, getting people tuned back up on their diet and lifestyle, you literally would see them get younger and younger and younger. If you do uh, the photographs uh, of me and you line me up and you see me rapidly age to my nadir uh, when I was 52, and now uh, with my diet and lifestyle, you keep putting up those photographs. Now it's true, my hair is getting grayer. <laughs> But uh, That's young, okay. I got younger, plenty of white here. <laughs> uh, younger and younger along the way. Well, do, do you feel that uh, – uh, have you ever had the a telomere test done? Yes, with, I have. So, so you know what? When well, I what, is, what to, is your age? I don't well, know. I'm going to tell you that story. Yeah. So when I sent that off, I'm thinking, okay, be mentally prepared because you have progressive multiple sclerosis. Mm-hmm. You would ex- predict my telomeres would be 10 to maybe 15 years older. Okay. than my chronologic age but because I have a progressive neurodegenerative disease. Okay. So I'm mentally prepared, like, okay, you're just going to get two. You'll get one now, then you'll wait two to three years to get another one. So you just want to see, yeah, have you slowed the aging process or did you youth in a bit? So okay. I got my results. I am 12 years younger than my chronologic age by my telomeres. And when was that test done? Uh, a year and a half ago. And did you ever do one before that? Was that your first one? No, that was my first one. So I, I haven't gone wow. back. So, they, I mean, they were astounded. Of course, then they gave me a little note to uh, adapt the uh, Mediterranean diet. And I sent back, said, no, no, you're telling people to adapt the walls diet. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you proved something there. Yes. Uh, and granted, back to your, the, the quack site you were mentioning earlier, I'm sure there's people out there who, who are, actually, I already know there are, there's people who critique the, the telomere analysis. Oh, yeah, um, of course. There's always going to be people on both sides of the fence. And you know, it, it would, would, okay, so the, the big question I tell everyone is, uh, it, it matters is uh, what can you do functionally in terms of your mood, your mental clarity, your joy, your physical capabilities? Are you getting younger, stronger, healthier, more vigorous? Um, I, I do cognitive training. My uh, cognitive abilities are continuing to improve. My physical strength continues to improve. Um, so... And then the next question, a lot of people say, well, clearly all your phys- physicians had to be incompetent. You could not have had progressive multiple sclerosis because that never recovers. I'm like, okay, well, let's say maybe everybody was incompetent who took care of me. The real question is, does my intervention help others? And so we have clinical trials, prospectively going forward, randomized showing that, yes, my trial does help others with progressive MS and with relapse remitting MS. And then in the hundreds of thousands of followers I have, we have all these folks who are contacting us with a wide variety of medical issues saying, I have condition XYZ. My doctors had given up. I started your protocol, just trying to slow things down. But I'm better. I need fewer or no drugs at all. I'm having to look, look these diseases up. I've not, you know, a lot of them I've never heard of. Well, and the scary part is, because uh, I've heard with other other issues, not, not just MS related, but obviously, but like par- parents, for example, back to your point on families. And, and while I'm saying this, I'm going to do another screen share because I, I love showing your before and after to people. Because um, you, you, you have these photos on your site. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can see it online, but I'm sharing it for the video watchers. Like this is your, what, 2008, yeah. right? On a bike. And obviously prior, you in that, uh, the customized wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even the newest. Like you have a newer one here. Hold on a second. Uh, but my, 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 my point here is that I'm worried about uh, parents and, and, and families because they, you know, there's doctors out there. It's like, oh, all of a sudden you take your kids off the drugs. I'm like, well, if we've healed you enough to not need to be on the drugs, for example, diabetes and things of that nature, uh, then, uh, okay, are, is it abuse? Are you overstepping your boundaries if there's a doctor advising? Well, I don't know. So you know, uh, the question of uh, how you safely transition your current yes. lifestyle 
to a health promoting lifestyle, your primary care doc should be able to do that, whatever your underlying health issues are. Okay. And they should be able to monitor how you're doing and reduce your blood pressure meds, your blood sugar meds, and help you decide, are, are there other medications that could be simplified? So you'd always want to do this working with your physician. And if your physician is not fired up about you eating more vegetables, fire them, get a new one. Yeah, if they're not fired I, up about your learning how to meditate, a stress-reducing practice, fire them, get a new one. If they aren't fired up about your wanting to move more, fire them. I love this. I, I tell people all the time, like, there's a classic quote of like, you know, get a second opinion. Like, hello, we can. There is no yeah. shortage of and, medical and, professionals. And it's fine that your specialist doesn't know about diet and lifestyle. That's fine. But you should be able to find a primary care doc that would be excited to help you learn how to eat more vegetables or be excited to uh, help you um, uh, do a stress reducing practice mm -hmm. and to monitor how well you're doing and to wean you back if you begin to have symptoms of being over medicated. This a primary care doc or nurse practitioner or physician assistant should be able to assist you with that. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, so actually it's interesting nowadays because I'm hearing more and more about uh, people trying to find the balance between the classic MD, right? Your, your, your home practitioner, so to speak. And then there's the, uh, the, this new middle of the ground uh, that I'm seeing titled as functional medicine. And then yes. obviously your naturopathic, which is on the other far side, you got East and West yeah. and then this functional in the middle. So, yes, you know, and uh, there are uh, an emerging profession, health, health coaches that are helping people uh, work on their health behaviors that's a great profession. Then there are some uh, nutrition therapists who can help people figure out how to uh, make these adjustments in their eating plans. So that can be really helpful as well. Are you also, uh, with your seminar, and actually speaking of more tools for the, for the uh, conversion, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, there is a book that I own, <laughs> The Walls Protocol a, Cooking for Life. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful book. And the, what I've did here in this book is I really focused on uh, how to make foods that are quick, easy, using ingredients that you could get in rural Iowa in small town uh, grocery stores. So this is not a, a, um, an exotic, hard to prepare, hard to find ingredients books. This is the, these are the kinds of meals that we would teach our vets uh, to implement. Uh, and these might be uh, folks who are living on food stamps, trying to figure out how to how to deal with their health challenges with very limited financial resources. That's a big component behind, I think, why your books are so successful is that, or they should be even more successful, is that whether it's your book or somebody else's book, a lot of people are withdrawn or afraid to embrace the healthier lifestyle choices or food choices because a lot of people are like, oh, that might not be available at my supermarket or my, my local corner store or whatever. So I love the fact you're like, hey, I live in Iowa and I know about rural remote areas. Rural remote areas. Yeah. And, and, and folks who say, you know, I can't do this. I can't just buy uh, organics. Like in, in my lifestyle clinic, people couldn't afford organic. They couldn't go to the uh, near Whole food store. They were just doing the best they could at their sure. local high V or the local Kroger's. Mm -hmm. uh, and we started there. You start with where people are at. Work what you got. We had to teach them how to cook at home. And we taught them, you know, basic things, how to make cooked greens, how to do green smoothies. Um, and we, we helped people uh, who, to do this as vegetarians uh, because that was um, something that was more affordable for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you, you don't, you can do this living on food stamps. You do have to learn how to cook. <laughs> Which, let's That's be real, you got to find a way to make it fun. I'm a much better, I have no problem, I tell her all the time, I'm a much better cook than my fiance. I love cooking. It's, 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 a, it's a creative outlet for me. Uh, but just like everything else in life, you have to embrace that short-term transition of being awkward or uncomfortable. And yes. that's with every new thing in life, is embracing the change. Correct. You know, it, it, and um, we, we made the cookbook uh, easy, simple, um, uh, and uh, our, our patients found it to be a very useful tool to learn how to begin making meals that you could make in 15, 20 minutes with ingredients that are readily available that are also readily affordable that could transform their health in a very positive way. 
Yeah. And like I said, I'll say it again. I think that's a big success component of this is that meeting people where they're at is huge. And, yes. and, and I think in any profession, but especially your profession is like a lot of people feel possibly alienated or, uh, or removed from the equation of success in these areas. I love the yes. fact that you have met people where they're at. So correct. We're very successful. You know, and the people we saw, uh, obviously, a lot of MS patients, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, diabetes, obesity, uh, polyneuropathies, uh, uh, persisting pain, phantom pain after amputations. Uh, I'd say about a, a third of the folks uh, that we saw had chronic pain that uh, the other specialists could not adequately manage. And they came to us and uh, they got control of their pain, got off their pain meds, uh, and became progressively more and more functional. So, I mean, have you started documenting all these as cases as testimonials yet? I'm hoping. So, oh, uh, for, so we certainly inv invite folks uh, to come uh, give us testimonials on my uh, Facebook page, okay. uh, Terry Walls MD. You'll practically see us uh, with photographs of sort of the before and after and people telling their story. Uh, and so if you just go through Terry Walls MD and, and you'll see uh, a wide variety of stories, a variety of skin conditions, um, a wide variety of mental health issues, autoimmune issues. Um, it, it, uh, of course, many MS stories, optic neuritis stories, uh, remarkable transformations uh, that people document. Well, and that's, that's why I think also reinforces is that it's, you don't need to, you've been doing this for so many years now, you don't really need to reinforce what you know. There's plenty of people out there now doing that for you and, and willing to, willing to share. I mean, to, as you pointed out, I mean, your Facebook page, you guys got 120,000, yes, uh, over 120,000 uh, likes and followers. I'll go ahead and share that for the video feed. Yeah. Like clearly people like you. <laughs> Correct, it, and and uh, you know people will uh, uh, put up their post, uh, and we, um, uh, it's it's lots of fun to get these photos, yeah, uh, before and after. Uh, and of course, I, I'm traveling uh, the world, uh, giving lectures about diet uh, and uh, lifestyle. Uh, I was in Australia uh, for three weeks. Uh, oh. New York and Canada, uh, all across the U.S., uh, teaching hundreds and thousands of clinicians how to use diet and lifestyle. That's, I think, uh, is going to be your biggest win, too, because I, I've, I've had doctor, many doctors on this show, and they all admit the average uh, you know, educational program, you know, MD, you might get an hour of nutrition, maybe 10 hours max across the board, depending on what school or university you're, you've studied oh, yeah. at. It's that you don't get a lot. No, we, we do not get a lot. We don't get a lot of training on how you people help people adapt and sustain these health behaviors. Um, uh, but that's changing. It is. It is changing. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be part of that change. Well, I love the fact that you shared that uh, 10 years sounds like a lot. But once you explained it the way you did today, it's like, wait a minute, that, you actually said like 10 years, that's fast. I'll, you're, you're happy. It's very fast. It's you're very happy. fast. That's big. I mean, it, now, granted, if we tried to rewind this 40 years ago, it would have probably taken 20, 30 years to do the same amount of time. So to your point on social media and technology and everything, we're able to accelerate the timelines. Correct. It, and when in, in 2020, when we are able to analyze my current research data and publish that, that will accelerate the next level. And we have... Uh, more grants are going in, more studies that will happen. Uh, we've added more staff. Um, so I, I just exciting. see this uh, continuing to expand. Uh, when I look at clinicaltrials.gov, uh, I see more you know, other dietary intervention studies. That book, uh, The Walls Protocol, uh, drove the MS Society to change their priorities, uh, provided lead funding for myself and other scientists to study diet, and lifestyle, and this is going to expand. It's very I would exciting. I would love to see this cross over into the ADA, the AHA. Um, I could have another whole podcast about that <laughs> uh, because they could also use some of that same refreshing new perspective. Um, 
uh, like, you know, like the, and the public the public will demand it you'll have to have other uh, physicians like myself uh, that uh, can do the uh, research uh, but the public will create the pressure in the interest to get that that initial uh, pilot funding mm -hmm. so you can get the pilot data uh, because it's the pilot data that we use to write for the multi-million dollar grants through these bigger studies gotcha so it's, it's a process it's always a step by step there's always step a process okay so there's always a process well, well, listen, I want to respect your time today. So speaking of the general public and calls to action, and, and obviously this is really about the listeners, not just you and I having a yes, wonderful yes. connection today, but I always ask my guest co-hosts as we close the show out, you know, is there an all-encompassing message or final words that you want to leave behind for the listeners well, because you're creating so much amazing change? So I'd like the listeners to go to turnwalls.com forward slash diet okay. and get that one page handout that is a really great summary of the key concepts of the Walls diet. You can put it on your refrigerator and it'll help you restructure your approach to food. Um, and, and what this really is, uh, uh, a goal of nine cups of vegetables, greens, sulfur rich, uh, color rich, uh, and uh, some clean meat, and a lot of great oils such as uh, olive oil or flax oil, hemp oil. Uh, but this is a great pyramid to get you started in terms of how to think about uh, the food. Yes, whether you're using the term pyramid, food plate, whatever other kind of you know vernacular we got thrown out there these days. In the end, I love the fact you're giving away a nice little simple PDF. That's yeah. It, anytime you can simplify it. <laughs> correct, correct. I mean, we, we need a simple, a memorable way to get started. Yeah. As you get more comfortable, you can get a, a bit more sophisticated, but that is a great start. Start simple. So that, that more and more people be easy to, to accept that. So, well, listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, she just gave you your call to action. Okay. I, we said it multiple times on the show, terrywalls.com. There is a wealth of resources here. If you're hardcore and you want to, you want to get involved in a seminar and retreat. Great. Uh, if you are a health professional, uh, which I know we have a percentage of that in our listener base, please you know, check out her certification program because this is huge. I mean, getting the knowledge of nutrition out there in the professions of, of MDs and everybody else, I, I'm, I'm quite passionate about it. And then obviously she said, go to slash diet, terrywalls.com slash diet, score the free PDF, guys. That's a free resource. Maybe it's not just for you. Maybe it's for a family member, a friend. Uh, we all know, unfortunately, nowadays, we all know somebody possibly living in an unhealthy state that's ready to make some changes. So uh, we definitely talked about healthy lifestyle today, guys. This is what we do. So again, that's another powerful Live the Fuel show. We're here to fuel your health, your business, your lifestyle. TerryWalls.com, the Walls Protocol, crushed it. So thanks for tuning in. You too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon.